and gentlemen, today is Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. It is 6 p.m. and I now call the San Juan Economic Development Corporation meeting to order. First item on the agenda is our Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next item will be our roll call. I'll begin with my far left with Ms. Martha. Benapona. Ramon Candelario Flores, member. Neto Guajardo, member. Arturo Guajardo, Jr. Mr. Marquis Villegas. Claro Contreras. Thank you. Item number four is our public comments. Do we have anybody registered for public comments today? Okay, with no one registered for public comments, we'll move on to number five, which is our director's report, Mr. Arjona. Yes, sir, Mr. Members of the board, good evening, uh, staff, guests. Uh, very quickly, we have a couple of uh, items to report that the uh, groundbreaking, as you have an invitation right in front of you, will be taking place at the uh, on next August 17 at 12 o'clock. We hope that you guys can make it, be with us and, and, and participate with us on that uh, groundbreaking. It's going to be for the North uh, Sports Complex. It's going to be right next to the water plant on Fasur Road. So, um, that's the same complex that Mr. Godinez was talking about the other day. One of yes. he's one of the nicest complexes. All right, nicest one in the state or in, in the, the nation, whole Mr. world? <laughs> <laughs> in the whole wide world. No, I'm, I'm glad. Sounds it's going like to be a nice, nice beautiful place. facility. So. Hopefully you, you all can join us in attending that historical groundbreaking that is gonna be taking place. Uh, the next one that uh, I just wanted to let you all know that we had a, a, a good ribbon cutting over at Tio Ruggeri, uh, the seafood place. Uh, that took place last week on Thursday, very well attended. Um, hopefully everything goes well. Who was the owner of that? Is it not the same business owner as all the other ones, right? Yes, sir. That's what the same one. Chapa. Yep. The one that has the wings. And yeah. No, 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 no. That's he's the developer. He's the owner of the uh, plaza. He owns the whole the complex. complex. He owns the complex. Yeah, he owns the plaza, and there's a, a a meat market there, and then he's got the Rodinsky, and now with the uh, in Puerto Rico, Jerry. But that restaurant does not belong to this gentleman, the owner no. of the complex. So no, okay. he's leasing that that property. He's leasing. Yeah. Cool. Um, and other than that, uh, there, there's good news that I'd like to discuss with you guys in executive session, potential developers. And some developer that is coming in, the new business is a new restaurant. You're gonna like it, but I'll discuss all that in executive session if I may. Very good. Any questions, comments, concerns for our director and his report? Okay. If not, then we'll move on to our uh, next item, which is six one discussion and possible action, if any, on the downtown revitalization plan. Yes, this is an item that we have it here on a regular basis. Right. Uh, but there's an item in the next session as well that uh, Mr. Rodinas will be. Okay. So at this point in time, we don't need to discuss anything further. We'll wait for executive session. And if any action is required, we'll take it when we come back. Okay. Then our next item is 6 2 discussion and possible action, if any, on RFOs for EDC attorney services. Yes, as, as you recall, we went out for RFQs on the uh, attorney services for the EDC. We had a couple of uh, people submitting, a couple of companies. Uh, one of them is the, the one that we currently have, which is Highland de Marathon Castillo. Uh, the other one is Alejandro Benavides, Jones, Gilligan, Keys, and Lozano LLC. Both of them are here present. Before you, you have the packet of the uh, request for qualifications. Uh, what we typically do is give them a three, five minute uh, presentation, and then you guys can take a vote if need to be taken a vote. Uh, I'd like to make a recommendation if um, at this moment I'd like to make the recommendation of uh, Mr. Alex Benavides Jones and um, that attorney firm. Make, I'd like to make a motion to approve, accept their RFQs. I have had a chance to review the package. I don't know if uh, the rest of you have, but I've reviewed the package and the information. Is that what you're requesting to do the presentations or without presentations? Without presentations. Okay. We have a motion to accept without presentations. Do we have a second? If not, that motion will die. And then do we want to hear the presentations? 
If they're on, I would say might as well. Yeah, might as well right. here. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Benavides, you want to come first? And then we'll let our existing counselor present. Yes, thank you. And uh, good afternoon, early evening. My name is Alex Benavides. And as you heard, I am an attorney uh, at the, the law firm of Jones, Galligan, Key, and Lozano. Uh, we're a law firm in Westlaco, Texas. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been at the law firm. I'm a partner at Jones Gallic, and I've been there since uh, 2018. October uh, 2018 is when I started there. Um, however, I've been licensed since 2008. Um, I used to work at the district attorney's office in Hidalgo County for many years before I went out into private practice, where I now focus primarily in civil litigation and representation of governmental entities. Um, our firm has uh, a lot of deep history in the Rio Grande Valley, um, having been established in uh, 1986. And we have 14 attorneys at our firm, uh, staff of over uh, 30 legal assistants, paralegals, um, receptionists as well at the firm. And a lot of our attorneys, not all of them, but the majority of our attorneys are local attorneys from the Valley. Uh, whether they're from Harlingen, Westlaco, Donna, you know, we have Valley attorneys that understand um, our Valley clients. And also the majority of our clients are Valley clients as well. Um, because we have a significant number of attorneys at our firm, we're fortunate to be able to provide services in both uh, transactional practice and also litigation. Uh, as you heard, I'm on the litigation side, but we also have several attorneys that practice in transactional, uh, real estate law, entity formations, uh, probate, estate planning, uh, those areas of law. Um, so we, we do offer many areas of law um, as legal, service, legal services to our clients. However, uh, of particular relevance to um, the board this evening, I'd like to just touch on um, the experience that we have in representing EDCs, uh, governmental entities, municipalities, and school boards. Combined total in representing all these uh, governmental bodies and EDCs, uh, we have over uh, 36 years of experience. Um, we have uh, our proposed team for the San Juan EDC would be myself as the primary contact. Um, and I currently do work, uh, I'm in, myself and my partner, Gene Vaughn, our general counsel for the West Laco EDC. And we also do work for the Mission EDC, uh, not as general counsel, they don't have a GC, um, but we do provide work on an as needed basis. Uh, and also we do provide uh, economic development work uh, to this county uh, for the county judge's office as well. And Hidalgo County is our client uh, as well. So we do work for the county. Um, but we also have uh, significant experience in representing uh, school districts. Uh, Ivan Pettis and my other partner, Greg Kerr, uh, are the attorneys that primarily do school law work and also experience in representing municipalities. Um, and also important to the EDC is our real estate expertise. Uh, between Matt Jones and Gene Vaughn, those two are attorneys are our real estate specialist. So when issues come up with the EDC, whether you're purchasing land or doing a real estate deal, um, or those attorneys can step up and help with um, review of the contracts or drafting of the contracts, negotiating a deal. Uh, that's the experience they bring to the table. Uh, and then myself and Greg Kerr um, and Ivan Bettis have experience in Open Meetings Act, public information requests, uh, drafting, uh, reviewing incentive agreements as well for the EDC. So we overall combined, our firm has a lot of experience, but most importantly, uh, what we offer, um, like I said, is that we're a local firm and a lot of our attorneys are local attorneys. You know. And the most important thing to us, you know, being timely, being responsive to our clients, all of our clients, um, and also providing ethical uh, representation uh, and top quality legal representation to our clients, making sure that we never put our clients in a bind, uh, in an ethical bind. So our advice to you all will always be in your best interest, even if it's not uh, the most popular uh, advice or the advice that you may not want, it's the advice that um, is designed uh, to keep our clients out of trouble um, and to make sure that um, we provide the best uh, legal services possible. If there's uh, any questions, uh, I'm here and, and I'm ready to field any, any questions that you, all, that you all may have about our firm, our history, um, our services, our rates, anything that you may have a question about, more than happy to answer. Gentlemen? Questions for a presenter? Yeah, I have a question. So you yes, mentioned you you represent the city of West Saco EDC and Mission EDC, along with the county. Is there any other uh, cities that you represent with the EDC as far as comparable sizes to uh, to us? Uh, specifically, or cities? Uh, EDCs. Uh, no, West Saco Mission and the county. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Mr. 
my career degree in life decision, but is, um, you know, we're always having to be very careful of spending our money in the particular city and you know, the constituents and have our community. And one of the things I noticed in my package is your rates and your fees are not good. Can you please explain why? Well, I did get a call from Lori Maldonado at the purchasing department asking about um, why our rates were not included in the package. The RFQs had an instruction um, in one of the attachments um, that said specifically, do not provide your rates at this point in time. That's to be negotiated and discussed at a later time. So that's why it was not included in the initial package. However, when Ms. Maldonado called me, I said, that's the reason why it's not in there, but we have no problem whatsoever providing you that information. So as soon as we got off the phone, I followed up and sent her an email and gave her our rate information. So that isn't an email. I don't know if she slipped that into our package or not, but we did supplement uh, our information with our rates. And I'm more than prepared to discuss that right now if there's any questions about our rates. Uh, we, we do bill at an hourly rate. Um, for partners, it's two. And this is not our, our general rates, but I'm just telling you precisely what we offer the West Lico EDC. Uh, which is a discounted rate from most clients. Uh, but for the West Lico EDC, our hourly rate is $225 an hour uh, per, per partners, uh, $195 for associates, and for any uh, actual litigation matters that we handle, that's at $250 an hour. That's the case. Why did the other firm provide and who put the package there? So are the uh, purchasing agent. Purchasing agent. But I'm pretty sure you review it before. I didn't. I didn't get to see the uh, the numbers. I just put them in there. I had a big question with that because as I'm reviewing the information in the packet, I'm wondering why we have fees for one firm and fee and we do not have fees for another firm which clearly states here not provided but as mr benavides states uh the rfq that he received and i'm pretty sure that that's hopefully the same rfq that that uh, the other attorney ohalan castillo received is specifically telling them to not provide the fee I would agree. I think that most of the uh, decisions that are made are, are made are based off of the uh, the coin, off of the the dollar amount. And um, uh, it was concerning to me that there was not uh, a price or a number attached to it. It wasn't provided here, but now I'm finding out that there was something attached to it. And after hearing those numbers uh, verbally from you. Um, it would be in the best interest of our EDC um, to go with this firm. Uh, the same question that Mr. Contreras has about the numbers not being provided, I think that's probably the, the most important information to be provided on these uh, RFQs. But I understand RFQs, RFPs now, what the difference is, but I think that they should have both been provided on our end, on our end. Bottom line was, was both information uh, discovered for both of them? I mean, regardless, based on the request, what I'm saying is after the attachment, right? Correct? You attached, did you make a correction and you attached something therefore? I, I sent an email to Ms. Maldonado okay. immediately after I, she called me okay. um, because she it, it seemed like she was indicating that they wanted that information. Uh, contrary to but what it, we it was done. And so I, I emailed her right away. But said, it was done. Yes, I have a copy of the, okay. the email. Okay. So. Commissioner, that's, that's, my that, that, that's my concern, Commissioner, it was not done because it was not provided to us. Whether he emailed that information to Lori Maldonado, uh, Mr. Arjona just stated that he had not seen that information. No, I'm not arguing that. I'm arguing the process of it. I, I mean, the bottom line is that we have the correct information to make a decision on the ultimate 
decision based on the pricing or whatever it may be. I'm not worried about the process or the argument of how we got there, per se. See, that's my worry. Okay, because well, if, you're arguing if, something different. I'm, I'm just worried about was the information given correctly, period. Yeah. Regardless, we do have all the pricing in front of us now to make a decision, right? Now we can, we can, we can, we can take up that matter separately uh, with Mr. Arjona and figure out what happened or what didn't happen. But I've got a question. So, yes, sir. This contract that we put out to Mr. Arjona, we have a set fee that we pay for the contract. This, these hourly rates are for services outside or in addition to the contract, is that? Yes, because we have a set fee. It's a set fee. And these come into play, these these hourly rates come into play when? I wouldn't say that there's anything outside of the uh, here. So if they're, if they have to do any, any other work besides what's here at ADT, they charge on the hourly basis. So we can ask our current legal counsel, do those come into play pretty often, counselor? Recently, we've had a couple of real estate deals, but uh, had, hadn't been that much. I, I've had it now for the last six months, and uh, he wrote off everything to do with NAVA, but that was a particular issue that we can talk about in close, just because of litigation. And uh, a handful of real estate hours, maybe four or five. Only when it's, we talk probably four or five days a week, three days a week on real estate, but unless it requires me to sit down for more than 30, 45 minutes to dig into something, I don't go for it. Or like you know, I get here early and we. So we can know what we're what we're looking at. Okay, so part it's it's the fee that we agree on on the contract. This is just anything outside. That's why when we have like a request for qualifications after the fact, let's say you choose uh, Mr. Benavides or Mr. Hammond on this other side, you guys negotiate. Right, it's a negotiated contract and and the hourly fee. Right, right. We can all negotiate that. Right. Okay. Any other questions for our current presenter? Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Benavides. Appreciate you being here with us and expressing interest in the San Juan EDC. Thank you, gentlemen, for your all's time and your consideration. Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. President, one more, one more question. I just thought of this. Um, this we, we received this package last Thursday or Friday, last Friday, and this is our regular scheduled meeting. When did you get notified to come in and present or invite it? I was invited uh, this afternoon today at 4 p.m. Gentlemen, thank you all for your thank you, Mr. Benavides. Your consideration. Yes, you can approach the bench, sir. Sorry, I'm getting some work questions here on my phone. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Our proposal in front of you, we um, just to give you a little bit of background about the firm in case you're not aware, the firm's been around since the mid 1990s. It was founded by Kevin O'Hanlon, who actually was uh, the attorney, assistant attorney general under Jim Maddox. For those of you old enough to remember Jim Maddox, and then he was uh, the general counsel of TEA for five years when Ann Richards was governor, he, and then he left to start the firm. So obviously, a real good background in terms of what what he did for school law. We're now one of the largest school law districts and uh, school law firms in the state. We have offices in Fort Worth, in uh, Austin, in San Antonio, and then here in FAR. And um, now we've got our biggest offices now in FAR. So going back about 10 or 11 years, when I was a lawyer, before I became a superintendent, I started, Hidalgo was one of my clients. We had a number of clients. I had about 15 clients in the Valley, and that's when we really grew the, this was 2008, 2009, when we grew the, the Valley office. And now this is our largest office by far, where we have the majority of clients, the majority of our lawyers, and now we spread out into Laredo. We do a lot of, our, our main clients are in region one, which is from Brownsville to Laredo. But now we have a lot of clients between here in San Antonio and in San Antonio, so we cover that entire region. Over the last 10 years, we've also moved into uh, the city work and primarily with the EDCs right now. And you know, a lot of this switches, there's politics, things change, you can't hold on to clients forever. We understand that we just try to be prepared and at the disposal of clients whenever they're ready for us to serve. And we often partner with firms. On the EDC side, right now in the Valley, we do San Juan here, FAR and ELSA, and also Palm View. And we have two ESD clients, which are emergency services districts. 
and that's Hidalgo County and Pecos County. We also do Pecos EDC. I forgot to mention that. If for you that don't, that don't know what that is, that's the emergency services for a county. So that's a big one here in Hidalgo and then the one in uh, Pecos. But the vast majority of our work is school work. We're doing more and more municipalities now as, as we've met a lot of school board members and then go to, to city council. So they ask us to bid for some of those work, some of those jobs, we do that. We, I did not prepare this packet. We have a staff that does that, but I did just speak to Mr. O'Hanlon before I came in here and he said, he wanted to make it clear that the rates that he put was without a retainer, but with a retainer, it was 200 and 175. So I know that's complicated now because of, you know, uh, the other firm did not submit and I, I'm sorry, I know we want to have a fair uh, competition and, and I, you know, it's a shame that we don't have all that up there. So we're also happy to negotiate after the fact, as you said, you can do, and that's, that's another process that we can take because of the, of the posting. So we're happy to do it either way and sit down and talk about it. And uh, right now we have a retainer. The retainer turns out to be between 10 and 15 hours a month, depending on you know how many how long the meetings are and how much the prep time is for the meetings, because we include all the prep time. So the time that we have to look at the agenda, to talk about the agenda, prep for the meeting, get ready uh, on the days leading up to the meeting, and then of course then attend the meeting. None of that is uh, is billable work under the retainer, and then we only charge for the other items. As I mentioned, uh, we will talk about the litigation matter uh, and some of the particulars because it is litigation and it is something we don't want to talk about publicly. But that those fees were credited. We've already worked out that with Ms. Sharhona. And um, in terms of other items, we have not had other items except for real estate. And as I mentioned, it's been a handful of hours this year only when the work required uh, more detailed work. Ms. Arjona and I have met a couple of times with Mr. Palacios. What we've tried to do is maintain a close relationship with the city attorneys to make sure that we stay in sync with what they're doing over there. We're collaborating specifically on one of the incentive agreements on a current project. And because we opened up that relationship with Mr. Palacios and his firm, we have now are trying to create a monthly meeting to keep in touch and to make sure that everything that they're doing are very consistent. It's against the law for the attorney of the city to also be the attorney of the EDC, so we can't have that, but there's nothing um, in the law that prohibits us from working closely together to try to make sure that we're aligned and that we don't have any inconsistencies with what we're doing, but, but you do have to have two separate law firms. Um, in terms of my own qualifications, just to tell you my background, I was a teacher for three years went to law school in my late 20s. I graduated law school in 1996. I spent 10 years in corporate law, specifically outside of education. So I think that's the kind of law that helps here. I did real estate, corporate acquisitions, mergers and acquisitions, and then for seven years, I was a general counsel for a large Houston-based software company. I lived in, uh, I managed everything outside the US. So I had all of Latin America, all of Europe, and all of Asia, and I traveled all over the world for seven years doing that as their lawyer. Then I moved into school law in about 2008. And then from there, I became the superintendent of El Paso ISD and then back to do this work in 2021. So I've got a real diverse background that I can- That happened. How, you're a lawyer and you went to be superintendent of school? Well, actually, Rick Perry appointed me. It was the largest district in the history of Texas to go under state control. Still today is most districts that are taken over are five, 10,000 smaller districts. El Paso in 2011 was taken over by Commissioner Williams and Rick Perry and uh, TA took over the whole district, it was state control, superintendent went to jail, the board was removed, and they appointed board members. The appointed board members hired me, and that's why they picked me out of a law firm. A school board would have never picked somebody yeah, that, like that me. That wouldn't have been the normal, <laughs> normal course for you. To that's right, it's really okay. new. So I had to get my superintendent certificate, principal certificate, and did that for eight years, and then um, rejoined the law firm in 2021. So I, I think my diverse background, certainly I, uh, I'll, I'll, Mr. Arjona would have to speak to that, to you all without me around, but I think my diverse background in corporate school and representing nonprofits, for-profits and real estate transactions is something that's helpful because I have a broad scope um, of experience. Any questions, commissioners? Yeah, Mr. Arjona, Mr. Uh, the paperwork he submitted, um, 
under the conflict of interest form was not filled out. Uh, Mr. Cabrera, have you or your firm ever done any business represented Mr. Arjona or personal matters? No, sir. No, we wouldn't do that. We're not allowed to do that. For, that that's for any organization we represent. Not just, it's not just particular to him. We wouldn't be able to do that. I mean, if one of you had asked me a legal question here or there without engagement, of course, we would do that just over a cup of coffee, but we can't represent and legally be engaged with anybody that sits on a board. I can help you find another attorney or give you some direction, but we couldn't represent you. asking why would uh, this form not be filled out by you or your firm? I'm sure that's an answer. There's no, we have no problem filling that out. In fact, I could fill it out here in a few moments. I'm... I have a question. Yes, sir. If, if, if this board decided to continue services with your firm, I know a concern of this board has been the lack of continuity with the yes, same attorney. As you're well aware, we've probably been through three, maybe four or five. I don't remember anymore. Yes, sir. But do you foresee yourself being the attorney representing this entity or changes to come? Or do you have any control of that, if that were the case? If you no, I, I, right, but I want to see. I definitely, I definitely have control over that just because I control my own schedule and time, so I could do that. But what we try to do is... It's got to be mutual, right? We're not going to force somebody on you if you don't want them to be there. So Rico left. He had an excuse. He got another job. Right. Excuse, right? He went to I Washington. Yeah. He went to Washington. Yeah. But the rest, we don't. We didn't never knew what happened. Well, and I would encourage. I did not know one of the things that we do unless the client speaks up. And in this case, you have. And since you've spoken up, I've been the one that been here. Had my mom had surgery at one. But. I think what had happened, and that was our fault for lack of communication, nobody had expressed to us, because there's a lot of uh, districts and municipalities, and they just want somebody from the firm to be there. And of course, they prefer consistency, but as long as the firm's there, they're okay with that. But you've voiced a concern about that, so now that you've voiced that, we've been consistent since then. And that was just maybe, a lack, like I said, on our part, we should have been clear with Mr. Arjona and with the board about that concern. And we could have fixed that uh, at that time. So apologies that we didn't do that. Thank you, gentlemen. Second. We've got a motion and a second, second to go into executive session temporarily to discuss this item. We'll return back shortly uh, to see whether we're going to wish to take action or not. Okay. That can be done, right, Counselor? You know, that's <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> I, I've got a concern about if you look under the, uh, the particular provisions for closed meetings in this one, I, I would be concerned of the allocation. I think that this discussion would have to be held in open. In open. What do you think, Mr. Benavides? <laughs> we got two lawyers here that can tell us. I'm on the legal counsel of the board. <laughs> I, I do agree. We have to cut that out. And um, gentlemen's agreement, I'm willing to step out. <laughs> and we leave it in open. That's a good idea. That's another way to solve the problem. There you yeah. go. That's a better idea. <laughs> yeah, that's better. You have to go to closed session to do that. Perfect. Thank you, guys. So then we, we will not go into executive session on the advice of our legal counsel, right? No, and it's just them because they're the ones that we're discussing. What do you guys think? Are you guys ready to take action? You don't want to take action? What do you want to do? <laughs> send, send it up on the agenda. Mr. Contreras places on the agenda. He voices what well, he wants to do. In the first place, I don't know why we were changing changing uh, legal counsel. I thought we should have just kept the guy that we had. Which is this guy? This, well, the firm. the firm that we have right now. I mean, it was in no sense of trying to change. I mean, he gave an explanation. Why was he out? Other people were out, probably COVID or whatever it is, miscommunication. 
uh, I mean. But we're at this point now. So yeah. We got to this point, yeah. so then we have to pretty much act. Uh, if I may, Mr. Ojardo, I'd like to address Mr. I mean, Commissioner Ojardo's concern. He's expressing why there have been many reasons why, and not just expressed by myself. Commissioner Villegas has expressed his concerns as well, along with other people. So there are many concerns that have been expressed during several meetings of why, just like our board president just mentioned, one of the biggest one was the inconsistency of having the same, rep uh, same uh, attorney here in the meetings. And that caused a lot of confusion well, because we spoke a lot about big projects and several projects. And it was obvious, at least to me, that mm -hmm. there was no communication amongst that firm, amongst well, the attorneys. I mean, well, wait, ho hold on, hold on. Um, to answer your question, Mr. Contreras, um, you need to understand that sometimes that it happens everywhere, miscommunication. We're not always going to be perfect. Uh, the gentleman said that he wasn't make it, uh, well, able to make it because his mother had surgery. Uh, I know the other law firms, apparently someone had COVID. Uh, for whatever reason, it's always going to be like lack of information or not communication. Well, and it can happen to anybody here in the valley, outside the valley, anywhere. Uh, I don't know. I mean, for you guys, I don't know what you all decided to, you know, want to change uh, lawyers, and it's probably this, the concern that you have, Mr. Contreras, but for me, I mean, it can happen to anybody, man. Mr. I can tell you it's not probably. That's one of the concerns I've had and I've shared in several meetings. So, so we don't have to guess about it. I'm not, I'm not trying to guess well, about it. I'm just telling you that's one of the concerns I've had. What other concerns so would you have that you think they, they did wrong? <laughs> sure. Um, just, give, just give me a, throw me in something. You We've know. been talking about a project um, that uh, one of his, the attorney on his, his firm or that firm was going to provide us with some assistance. And that is the, the food, the food um, park, the uh, trailer. We never received the assistance that uh, we were told we would receive. And that was an attorney who hasn't been back. Another, another concern of mine has been with uh, the powerhouse gym issue with Mr. Nava, which we're going to talk about it tonight. But, but, but let me tell you that 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 has been for many, many, not just months, I mean, years that that issue has has been in our in, in, on us, on us, really. I'm not going to say just on the attorney, on us, but we need attorneys, Several different attorneys with that same issue in front of us. We, we need attorneys to keep up with that and make sure it gets corrected and not wait for us to keep bringing it up. Or we before I was here, that, yeah, all of us, I guess. So there's there's, yeah, there's yeah, plenty I, of things. I, there's I, more I, things. I understand what you're saying. That issue can't be placed on. Yeah, but that, that can cannot be. be he, they, those guys cannot be blamed for it. So at this time, at mean? this point in time, we're faced with two firms in front of us. Do you guys want to take action? Well, for, can we extend another week or two? Because we only had two firms to advertise again. To get some more, some more. You want that? I mean, why can't we? I mean. Why can't we extend it? Huh? Why can't we extend? It? We don't have to vote today. We can extend it out. No, for... exactly. I mean, I, I would suggest that we advertise again. I mean, another week at least. We only had two firms. I think summertime, vacation, stuff like that. I mean, I just. Excuse me. Oh, you can do it for two. Okay. So it has to be. Did we advertise this one in the monitor? We see. I mean, that's a huge difference, I think. That would be my, 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 that would be my decision. Whatever you guys want to do. Then that would mean no action on this. Uh, you'd make a motion to take no action no, and then would be given him directive to, uh, to do it. Or you want to make a motion to hire one or the other. Everything is on the table right now. Whatever you guys want to do, we'll do. We have the board back by then also. We keep missing board members, so that's a little that's, difficult. That's so we have a full, full board. Just let me know you want to do a week, two weeks, so that we can have a tight schedule.
I would say the two weeks will be minutes at the door because we don't have a meeting for another two weeks regardless, right? That would that, be my decision. Are we going to bring it back at the next meeting or the meeting after next? After next. So I mean, it's going to be two. So then I would think without our legal counsel, just through experience, I guess I, you'd move to table this item. No action. No, or no action. action. Move to take no action. And then we bring it back in. To take no action and leave it, leave it all the okay. way it is. Well, my only question with that is if you take no action, then somebody has to place it back on the agenda for it to be unless the executive director is going to put, put it on there. If you table it, then it has to come back. Well, I mean, I just want, I want to make sure it gets done because uh, uh, we, we talked about the advertising and um, we, we had uh, decided on an advertising and, and I'm glad you're making it clear that you want that advertising done as soon as possible because we need to get this information out as soon as possible. But do you remember last meeting I asked you if anybody had submitted or requested information for this? I have the email where this gentleman submitted an email July 1st. No, no, I'm telling you honestly, I have the email that July 1st he emailed and requested this information. You want me to forward it to you? I have it. I mean, yeah. I'll tell you what, I guess to be a little bit clearer, more open about this, uh, when you do post this, this item for open again to, to accept more bids, forward it to us. To all the board members, forward the copy of, of the, the advertisement. The send yeah, send it over to everybody, and that way, if somebody wants to push it out on their own. That's, that's perfectly fine to do that too, right? That way, everybody will know. July first. Uh, good morning, Mr. Arjona. I hope this email finds you well. I'll forward it to you. It's directly to you. Okay. Then, well, we could take action right now. No action. Move. We got a motion to take no action. And a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign, and no action on this item. Sorry, who, who motion? Right here, second. second, right here. Just, we can just let them know that we decided not to take action. We're gonna wait a couple of weeks. I have a Ruben. Gentlemen, thank you guys for uh, exiting the room while we discussed. Uh, we kept this meeting in the open in an open forum. Uh, this board decided to take no action at this time. We're going to probably bring it back in a couple of weeks if that's okay with you guys. So thank you guys both for your time. Okay, appreciate you coming out tonight. Thank you. Okay, the next item is 6-3, discussion and possible action, if any, on sponsorship promotional San Juan Ath Police Athletic League and San Juan Police Department National Night Out, which is to be held Thursday, August 11th at 6 p.m. Is here to ask for some important you know, to give you some important information on that and also ask for assistance as far as on a sponsorship mr Wajardo. good evening uh mr president and uh, board i'd like to once again thank you for allowing me to be here to visit with you all um my name is ruben Wajardo. i'm the director of the san juan police athletic league uh, but uh, i'm here today just to uh to uh, uh inform you of an event that we're going to be having on uh, next wednesday august the 11th uh, here at Municipal Park, uh, which is the National Night Out event. Now, uh, National Night Out is a, uh, a national event that, that's held in the, in the month of, of, of August, okay? Now, uh, what it is, it's a community event, it's a community outreach uh, for law enforcement and, and departments or, or uh, programs such as ourselves, which is Police Athletic League. Now, it's a community event, and uh, this year we've titled it uh, the National Night Out Back to School event, okay? 
uh, we, uh, Police Athletic, Athletic League, has been involved uh, with our San Juan Police Department uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, and as we all know, due to the, uh, the, the COVID issue, uh, they've been uh, drive up or drive by type of uh, uh, giveaways. So uh, we're happy to announce that we have partnered up with, once again, with our San Juan uh, Police Department and the city of San Juan. And uh, we are actually gonna have this uh, at our San Juan Municipal Park location. And it will be a, a, a walk up event uh, again, this is this is all to uh, to to go out and and uh, invite the community, the children of our community, to come out and enjoy uh, some festivities. Uh, this year, uh, you know that we are now that we are going to have a, a per se walk up event. Uh, we have uh, contracted uh, some entertainment per se. We're going to have uh, some slides, water slides out there. We're going to have obstacle course for the for the for the kids. Uh, we will have uh, uh, a DJ out there uh, blaring music. We are going to have mu uh, movies in the park, um, which we are happy to say we're going to be showing Sing 2 for the kids. Uh, and also we are, uh, the San Juan Police Department is going to be handing out, I know minimum will be 500 backpacks uh, to, to, the, to the kids of our, of our, of our area. Designed the same way? The pickup? Oh, from something in blue? Yeah, it, it's a little different, and I'm sorry I didn't include that in the packet, but we did develop a map on that. Uh, the backpack giveaway will be, uh, like, it's, like I said, a, a walk-up event. So the lineup will be left field of, of the north side field, and we're going to funnel the, 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 the public towards the concession stand, receive their backpacks, and then exit on the south field to one of the gates that goes out there. Now, on our parking lot, which is going to be the east <coughs> half of the parking lot, we are going to have uh, some vendors out there, okay, food vendors. And, and we're asking these vendors to make it, uh, you know, affordable type of, of, of meals out there. Uh, it's, it's going to be lasting. It'll be about a three, four hour event. Uh, we are also happy to say that uh, we have several businesses and nonprofits that are going to join us uh, from county uh, departments to other cities. Uh, and then just local business that want to be a part of it. So they will be involved there. Uh, they'll set up 10 by 10 tents with a little stand. And uh, again, the main focus is back to school. And, 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 and these individuals are promoting either the programs or the businesses will be handing out not only their business information, but they're also their uh, school supplies uh, so the kids can add to their bags. Okay. Um, so we're excited uh, again. Uh, one of the big deals I wanted to do, or, or, or us as a, as, as a city, is, you know, due to the amount of years being kind of shut down due to COVID, we really haven't had a chance, or a lot of the, of the public hasn't had a chance to witness our, 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 our turf fields out there. So uh, we want them to go out there and, and get on the field and look at it, enjoy the movie out there. And, and let's get back to a little bit of normalcy and, 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 and just be out there and, and hang out, per se. Okay, uh, so we're excited about it. Uh, again, this is a community event uh, and it's an annual event, so we're happy to be a part of it once again. Uh, now, we were uh, honored by your guys' donation last year. If you look in your package, uh, this information you have in front of you has gone out to multiple uh, either vendors uh, or, or sponsors out there, and we've got some commitments already. Uh, so if you guys you know, can, can look at that and if you can you know, find it uh, in your budget to assist us in any way, uh, we are, we'll be more than happy to, to accept that and, and uh, you know, showcase our EDC. Uh, you guys have done a tremendous job and, uh, and believe me, you guys are out there. The community knows our EDC is working hard. Uh, based on the businesses that are coming into the city, we're just booming, you know, and, and it's all because of you guys. I agree. Um, so uh, if, I have, if you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer anything. Yes, sir. Last year. Uh, you know, Mr. Contreras, I, I want to say it was a silver package, okay. which was the 500. Silver. Yes, sir. Oh, for the, uh, this item, I always have a hard time, but yeah, I found those, it. Oh. I, I do have copies with me if you need them. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just not sure if it's in the... Captain, three. Yes, sir. Now, now, once again, like I said, uh, when we did our drive-ups or drive-through per se last year, uh, it was a little limited on, on vehicles and people coming in. They had to stay in their vehicles, and and we all did a, I mean, the, the partnership 
lady, the PD in herself was, it worked wonderful. So uh, this year, like I said, we kind of want to get it back to what we did you know, three, four years ago. And uh, we are going to add some additional stuff for the kids out there. Uh, so it, it, it's going to be bigger and better. Everything was given out, right? Nothing was left over? No, nothing was left over. Exactly. Yeah. Can we make a motion? And that is our goal once sure. again. I'd like to make a motion for the thousand. Second. Two thousand. We've got a motion and a second to be gold sponsors for this event. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed saying sign. Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations and good luck. Thank Hello. you guys. Again, I'd like to thank you guys for your for your uh, donation. And uh, now switching over to my other title or my other hat, I'm the Assistant Director of Parks and Rec under Mr. Hona touched on our on our groundbreaking that we'll be having on the 17th. So you guys uh, expect your invitations. It'd be awesome for you guys to show up. Again, EDC is a big part, not only uh, of, our, of our entire city, but of our Parks and Rec. So we appreciate you guys and hope to see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, sir. Our next item is 6-4, discussion and possible action, if any, on improving the release of funds to GW's barbecue catering in the amount, it says on, but it should be in the amount of $5,000 as per the commitment award letter. Yes. So, uh, Mr. Board Member and, and uh, Board Members, it's the, the agreement called for 5000 the first. Right. Oh, there's a nine, that's, that's what they're going Paul, that we had, we held them accountable. Okay, you had to have a certain amount of employees and you, you need to do this amount of sales. Well, I had one with him last week and his sales quadrupled yeah, his yes. expectation. So That's he's done extremely it is, well. It's, it's an honor by saying that. I don't know who was the one that sent the... the it was me. You sent, yeah, right. he sent you, the, the, He's putting some phone on the map. Too. Right, I mean, That's CNN. CNN. That's yeah, awesome. CNN. Yeah. Yeah. You were right. <laughs> yeah. And I told him, I said, man, we were, I, I was hesitant. We didn't know how to, you know, was that going to work? He's done very well. Yeah, I'm yeah. proud of him. I'm kind of upset because of the fact that they run out of food, but I think yeah. it's a good problem. Yeah, he sold us real quick, man. Pretty much on the day. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, you're going to see us soon, though. He does it, save it. Very good. So we'll need to take action. Do I have a motion for that? Take, uh, I'll make a motion to go ahead and get uh, Derek Carbona to go ahead and give the payment. The payment. Got a motion and a second uh, to approve the release to release the five thousand dollar payment on the anniversary date as stated in the agreement. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. We go on to item number seven, executive session. The San Juan Economic Development Corporation will convene an executive session in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Vernon Statutes Code, annotated. Government Code Chapter 551.071 and 551.087. The time is now is my phone? 6.48. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? I got a motion second. and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. We are now going into executive session at 6.48 p.m. Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The time is 8 a 8 p.m. We are out of executive session. Uh, board members, is there any action to be taken out of executive session? I believe we were only going to discuss item 6-1, which was the downtown revitalization plan. Yes, make a motion to table. Okay, Got okay. a motion to table second. and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And this will be tabled for our next meeting then. Uh, Motion passes. Do I have a motion to uh, so adjourn? Got a motion to adjourn. Nine a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Aye.